is day three of Psalm 34 covering verses 17 to 22 uh, if you missed the first two passages the first, first two sections excuse me 1 to 8 and then 9 to 16 you can uh, always go back and look at those uh, in the first one that we did we read the psalm in its entirety so today we're just going to read 17 to 22 shouldn't take that long uh, so let's see uh, the righteous cry and the Lord heareth and delivereth them out of all of their troubles. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. He keepeth all his bones, not one of them is broken. Even shall evil, excuse me, evil shall slay the wicked, and they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. The Lord redeemeth the soul of his servants, and none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. So, just a few verses, um, but we'll start in verse 17. David recalls the cries that he made to the Lord and how he delivered it. The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth and delivereth them out of their, all of their troubles. So David is reflecting, and again, he's still talking to this audience of people and, and reminding them. This is, this is what the Lord has done for me, and the, the Lord can do the very same for you. He's encourages, encouraging those that, that are with him that God can do the same. The righteous cry. If, if you become like the people that we've discussed in the, first, in, the, in the previous section, then and then you, you cry out to the Lord. He will hear you. And he will deliver you out of your troubles. Now, we, we must be careful with this out of all of their troubles, um, at least at face value. And I think we'll, we'll talk about that more here in a minute. Verse 18, the Lord is nigh or near unto them that are of a broken heart and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. David likely touches their hearts with this statement because as being a group of in debt distressed and discontented people, their hearts were in a place of, of, of brokenness. This made them perfect candidates for God's favor and salvation. I mean, you, you think of these, these, these guys who show up, these men and probably women and children who show up, and they're, they're in debt, they're distressed, they're bitter, there's, there's all these different emotions going on, all these different burdens that they're carrying. And then David says that the Lord is near unto them that are of a broken heart. This is, this is like a refreshment to a, to a, or, or a rain to a dry land. These, these people, it's, it's, it's great news. We, we are of a broken heart. We are of a contrite spirit. And David says the Lord is near unto those kinds of people. You see, when we are in a, a low place with troubles and needs, we are in, in the ideal place. For God to move, as long as we are broken and of a contrite spirit. Psalm 51 17 says, The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, thou wilt not despise. So if you if you don't recall, I, I love Webster's 1828 original dictionary because it's 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 where it all started. So it defines contrite this way: worn or bruised brokenhearted for sin, deeply affected with grief and sorrow for having offended God, humble and penitent. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart and saveth such as of be as a bruised spirit or a grieved spirit or a sorrowful spirit or a humble spirit. Verse 19, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. Here is that out of them all thing that we're looking at again. But 19 is kind of 
by itself, it's kind of heavy. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. So just a few minutes ago, David says, the righteous cry and the Lord hears them. A few verses ago, the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are open unto their cry. And then you're going to tell me that many are the afflictions of the righteous. What is, what is, that, what is that supposed to mean? How is that encouraging? Well, that part isn't necessarily encouraging. It's just true. This verse subdues the misconception that, that being a righteous person, you shouldn't have to suffer. We should, we should know by now that this is not the case. Indeed, many are the afflictions of the righteous. And we've, we've seen it in the New Testament. When Jesus talks, he says, you know, you will have trouble. You, the, blessed are you who are persecuted. I mean, Jesus is not shy about telling us that we're going to have some, some troubled times. We're going to have some opposition. We're going to have some enemies. And the same was true long before that. Same was true in the Old Testament. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. David is a great example already. David is a man after God's own heart, and he couldn't get away from trouble. It was, it was around every corner in, in all kinds of different ways. His own son wanted to, to end his life. His own, I mean, just everybody was against him. didn't matter who it was. And most of the time, it was, it was unprovoked. Now, there were a few times where David made some enemies because of his own poor choices, but the, the, the truth of the matter is, is, is that, you know, we, we saw it, uh, we looked at not that long ago about those, those people who think it's strange that you don't, you don't go to the same things that they, like you, you become a believer and all of a sudden you've changed, you're not interested in those things you were interested in before, you're not hanging out with that group of people and they're like, well, what's wrong with you now? You're all of a sudden super cool, you know, and, and goody two shoes and all these different, you know, phrases that don't really get used anymore. But, the, you know, we know the point. And it's this, you, you, be, you get enemies because you decide you don't want to live like that anymore. You get, you make people who, who don't want to be your friend anymore, people who, I mean, even family members who say, well, we don't, you know, they, they all of a sudden think you're too good for them. And that's kind of a, they put that on you, like implying that you necessarily think that. And I mean, it's, there's all kinds of, you know, trouble and, and various things. And most, I'm sure a lot of you can relate at, at some point or another um, to those kinds of experiences. Here it is. Verse, for, first Peter 4, 12, and 13 says, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you, but rejoice inasmuch as you are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, you may be glad also with exceeding joy. Don't think it's strange. Don't go, I, I, I can't believe this is happening. We shouldn't be surprised if, if we're, we're, a, we're a follower of Jesus Christ and trouble comes our way, it's, it's going to happen in various different forms for der various different reasons. But verse 17 says, The righteous cry and the Lord hears them and delivers them out of all their troubles. Now again, it, it may not be a, this trouble you're going to get, you know, God's going to deliver you out of every trouble you have in the midst of the trouble. But eventually, at the end, all of your troubles will be gone. There will be no troubles in heaven. We must keep in mind that the deliverance spoken here and in many other places are not here and now. Again, that God will deliver us in the end. Verse 20. He keepeth all his bones, not one of them is broken. Both likely a self Evaluation by David. I've 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 run from my enemies. I've escaped. I've all these different things, all these experiences that he's still reflecting on and, and teaching this group of people. I'm still none of my bones are broken. 
I'm still in decent shape. He's, he's kind of reflecting on the fact that he's survived or he's made it out in, in relatively good, you know, in, in good shape. But then there's this prophetic essence to it, the statement regarding Christ in, in John 1936, which says they didn't, they didn't break his bones. Remember, when, when crucifixions would happen, the, the soldiers would break the legs of the people to make sure they were dead. But when they came upon Christ, they, they assumed they, they could figure out he was already dead. There was no need to break his legs. So this was, this was a fulfilling of, of the prophecy that David spoke of regarding himself. Fuller cited in Spurgeon reads, Christ's bones were in themselves breakable, but could not actually be broken by all the violence in the world. Because God had foredecreed a bone of him shall not be broken. Verse 21 Evil shall slay the wicked, and they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. There's a promise there. This is kind of an encouraging word to this group of guys who, you know, 400 or so men, who have all these different things going on, all these troubles and burdens and, and, and whatever it may be, probably a lot like circumstances that some of us are going through. There's, there's a weight on your shoulders, whether it's financial or something to do with your family or something to do with your job or something to do with, excuse me, whatever it may be. And you, you come to God with this weight, with this, you're just, you're just tired, you're just, I mean, some of these people were bitter, all these different emotions. And, and we saw previously the roller coaster of emotions that can happen. And you come to God and you're, you need this encouragement. Evil shall slay the wicked. So if, if these people have enemies or, or troubles or opposition of any kind, it's kind of a relief to hear that, that it will actually destroy itself. Evil will end up just consuming its own self and destroying and you know we almost don't even have to do anything. We just have to watch. Not only was David confident and certain in God to rescue and care for the righteous, he also trusted the wickedness of the wicked will be dealt with by God. There's confidence in that. I don't I don't have to stop everybody from doing wrong things. I don't have to stop the world from being corrupt because it, I, I'm not going to be able to. It's in God's hands. It, it, that's, what, that's where it's at. Everything is in his control. Everything is, is under his authority and there's a confidence in the believer that says, you know what, I, I don't like what's happening. I don't like hearing about children being gunned down in an elementary school. That's, I mean, there's, there's no words to describe the kind of evil that, that, that comes into a person in order, in order to do something like that. But the confidence in God says, God will handle it. God will bring justice. We may not even see it the way we want to. Of course, I, I you don't know. I mean, evil shall slay the wicked. It's God's going to deal with everything at the end. The just and the unjust. When, when you come to the end of your life and you come face to face with God, he's going he's gonna to go over your whole life. Some of us, judgment has been taken care of. Some of us have gone from, God has gone from our judge to our father. So we're still going to review the things in our life and God's going to say, well, I wasn't too happy with that one, but you're still my kid. Here we go. But you're getting, some people are going to hear, I have, I have no idea who you are. Depart from me, you worker of iniquity. 
into everlasting fire. It's true whether you like it or not. So the urge, the, the, the warning that's there is come to God and, and, and repent and turn around and sin no more. Is what Jesus told the woman. We would, we would hope and pray that even the, the vilest of, of people would see the error of their ways and, and, and repent and seek forgiveness from Christ. And, but that's in God's hands. But we can be confident that God is just, and God is holy, so God will deal with what needs to be dealt with. Verse 22, the Lord redeems the soul of his servants and none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. Romans 8, 1 says, there is therefore no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Even under the old covenant, David knew something of his freedom from condemnation. The Lord redeems the soul of his servants and none of them that trust in him shall be condemned or desolate. David understood that. We, we must also understand that. The Lord redeems the souls of his servants. If you are, if you are a father, fa father, a follower of Jesus Christ, the Lord is redeeming your soul, both now and has already. So let this be an encouragement to you. Let this entire psalm, Psalm 34, be both an encouragement and a warning as it is to this group of people that, that show up in, in the cave where David's at. If you desire life and love many days, Keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guile. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Because the Lord is nigh unto them who are of a broken heart and a broken and contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. We're going to go through all kinds of stuff. Maybe sooner than later. Maybe bigger than we had ever planned for or imagined. Uh, I believe that there will be uh, those things coming this way um, soon. But have confidence in God. Have confidence in the fact that He will redeem you. He will deliver us out of all of our troubles. Maybe not right now. But in the end, all of our troubles will be handled. It will be taken care of and they will be gone. And there will be no burden of them anymore. Here and now, in this life, we will have trouble. In this world, we will have trouble. Christ says, but be of good cheer, because Christ has overcome the world. It don't look like it right now. I, I, I get that. It doesn't make it any less true. The victory has been won. We're just waiting for the final trumpet call and for it to be over. But you can rejoice in the Lord always because that victory has been, has been taken care of. So thank you for watching. Thank you for following me along in these psalms. And I pray that you continue. I pray that you would uh, encourage others to join and watch and listen. Uh, pray that you would comment. Leave me, a, leave me something to tell me how I'm doing. Um, encourage me or uh, constructive criticism tell me hey you missed it here you know those kinds of things I look I look I, I would appreciate that um, so tomorrow we'll start Psalm 35 and we'll go on from there so thank you for watching pray it bless you pray it pray it encourage you and we'll see you next time God bless